What comes to your mind when you think about heaven? Do you think of little chubby little angels sitting on fluffy clouds playing harps and, um, you know, some big fat guy with a big white beard in a white robe falling asleep or having someone feed him grapes or something? <laughs> and, and hell, what do you think of hell? Is it the funny picture of a little red man with a forked tail and a pitchfork? Um, I don't know. We're going to talk about heaven and hell today, and we hope that we can shed some light on, on what both of these places are like. And I do want to say that um, hell is terrible and heaven is wonderful. And heaven is not going to be a place where we're going to be totally bored with nothing to do. Heaven is going to be a place of work and relationships and wonderful things. So we're going to watch our video from Jonah and then I'm going to do a little bit of teaching. Welcome to Foundations. Today we're going to talk about heaven and hell. Yeah, uh, if you've been around uh, church for long enough or read your Bible enough, you've heard about the word hell, or maybe you just say it when you stub your toe really hard. Uh, no judgment. Um, hell is a concept that I think for a lot of us isn't very comfortable. Uh, I know I don't love it. I don't love the idea of a, a place that is just in general horrible and not fun to be in. Uh, but doesn't mean we can't talk about it. It shows up in the teachings of Jesus, and for that reason, we need to pay attention to it and try and understand what he was trying to say. That's good. Um, I'm old enough to remember the tail end of kind of um, overemphasis on hell in church. Um, I grew up, um, I remember as a child watching a movie called The Burning Hell that gave me nightmares. And um, I don't, I, I feel like uh, I know for, for a fact that that kind of teaching was abusive. Uh, I don't use that word lightly, but um, scaring people into making decisions for Christ and coming forward and being saved because they're terrified of hell. That's just not, um, that's not what Christ wanted. That's not, that's not really biblical. And so um, I do believe the pendulum has swung the other direction in reaction to that personally. That's my personal opinion opinion on that, but now we don't talk about hell very much. I've actually, you know, had people say, did you teach on hell? Like, like that was something I shouldn't have done when we discussed it with the children in the children's ministry. So, um, yes, it's in the Bible and we're going to talk about it. And so, um, Jonah, would you talk to us today about what you want to teach us about hell? All right. Well, uh, let's jump right in. Uh, hopefully not into hell, but uh, into the concept of it. Um, I know for me, hell is a term that gets thrown up a lot in today's modern world. It seems to be a casual saying, maybe a, a really bad, horrible thing, or you know, phrases that try and say something is really bad and it's just as bad as hell. You know, the phrase "war is hell," uh, or "I had a hellish week at school today" or "at work today." Uh, those aren't uncommon phrases in our, you know, common terminology. And yet, when we say those things, that doesn't really give respect to the biblical idea of hell. Uh, there's a lot of kind of cultural ideas of it, of it being, you know, a hot pit where the red dude with pokey horns is, you know, poking you the whole time. And that's not necessarily what's happening. Um, our biblical understanding that we have shows hell to be a lot worse than that, sadly. Uh, and it's sobering to show up and... and be greeted with a concept that is worse than what we think. But it doesn't mean that we uh, shouldn't talk about it. In fact, when we really realize it, um, our biblical teaching, most of it stems from the mouth of Jesus himself. It's one of the things that he preached about a lot. He spoke about it to his people and his disciples. Uh, and I don't know about you, but when I hear that Jesus speaks on something, I kind of want to pay attention. So there's a few different ways where it comes up. Uh, here's a few just verse citations to prove that I'm not going crazy. Uh, Matthew 5.22 describes a place of hell fire. Uh, Matthew 8.12 of outer darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth. Those are really, really extreme images and there's even more. Um, again, in Matthew 22, there's outer darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth again and that's one that shows up a lot and these are really strong really powerful symbols and when I think about that I don't want to go there I don't like the idea of that whatever it is 
And there's a lot of people that think those are just symbols. Those are just, you know, labels or stickers that Jesus is using to make a really exaggerated point. Um, and I fall into a camp uh, really similar to the theologian uh, R.C. Sproul, um, who a lot of these ideas are coming from. Uh, and he raises the point that if, if Jesus is using these as images and as symbols, uh, then that means that the real thing is probably worse. We don't usually use pictures or images to describe something uh, unless it's, it's not quite there. And usually when Jesus describes heaven uh, or eternal bliss or, or joy or salvation, he uses images to describe something greater. And I think if we're going to fall into a camp that says a lake of fire and weeping and gnashing of teeth and an outer place is just a symbol, um, I don't think we're quite off the hook because I think that if it's a symbol, uh, maybe the reality is, is actually a little worse, which is hard. I don't like to say that either. Um, but we do know a lot of things about hell. I think when we're kind of greeted with the idea that, oh, maybe hell is just a symbol or, or whatever, it's just a symbol of separation from God, uh, I think for a second that sounds easier until we realize and, and come to terms with the fact that that's not exactly what it is. Uh, it's not just removed from the presence of God, because what more would a, a sinner want than to not have to be near God? Uh, the Bible actually teaches that hell is a place where God is present in uh, delivering justice, in delivering anger and wrath and punishment. And that's really hard and it's really sobering, but it's in there and we have to come to terms with it. Uh, but in that, it's not that hell is a cruel place. Hell is not a cruel place. It's not where cruel and unusual punishment reigns supreme and God is a horrible person because of it. That's not the case. And I think when we have that thought, we need to realize that we don't take a light enough view of what sin does to us. Sin is death and it has eternal consequences and we do cause harm to other people when we sin. And hell is a delivering of justice unto those that do evil and do sin. And so hell isn't just a place where, you know, there's excessive punishment. We can rest in the fact that hell is where justice is given, even if it is for eternity. And that's hard. And I don't think anyone rejoices in that. In fact, I'd be worried if they did. But I think the good news is that we don't have to go to hell. That is really sobering news. Um, the truth is that if we really understood what hell was like, I can't imagine that anybody would ever want to go there. But the good news is that when we believe in Jesus and the good news of the gospel, we can go to heaven when we die. And heaven is where God reigns and lives. And we know that Jesus sits at his right hand some descriptions of heaven that we know about. Um, there are streets of gold. There are pearly gates. Um, one of my favorite descriptions of heaven is that when everything ends, when we have the, the new heavens and the new earth come to, to earth at the end of time, there's going to be no need for the sun and the moon and the stars because the glory of God and the sun are going to light up all of heaven. Um, so heaven is a beautiful place in God's presence and there's a lot of talk on what our bodies are going to look like or what we're going to, get to eat and what we're going to get to do and those are fun conversations to have but the truth about heaven is that we're going to be in God's presence and we're going to finally get to worship Jesus at his feet and so heaven is a beautiful place that is a reality and we're just so grateful that God has provided that for us through his son Jesus. Yeah. Uh and I think as the Bible speaks on the new heavens and the new earth, it's a beautiful reminder that it will be eventually, after everything happens, it will be a restoration of that garden, right? And the lion lies down with the lamb and no one shall hunger. And one of my favorite verses is, uh, about it is 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2.9. Um, but as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him.
that's really humbling and I think sobering to realize that uh, the wages of our sin is death, right? Uh, eternal spiritual death. And, and that means for us hell. It means those outside the city. It means those that don't get to enjoy the glory and life-giving presence of God. Uh, and that, that's scary. Um, and I don't like that. And that's kind of why we're here to teach this, because we don't want anybody to go there, and we don't want anyone to experience that. And the good news is that um, the strong man has been bound, that death has been crushed, and the serpent's head has been crushed by the heel of Jesus, right? Um, because although the wages of sin is death, um, the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's good news. So, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. We're going to have a little fun with our teaching portion today. We're going to do top five descriptions of what heaven is like. Okay? But before we do that, I just want to say that there's a lot of verses in the Bible that talk about what heaven is. Okay? Uh, Revelation 19.9 calls it a wedding feast. Uh, John 4.2, a mini-roomed house. Hebrews 11, 10, and 16 calls it a city. And then with gates and pearls and streets of gold in Revelation 21, 21. And a country whose hills flow with sweet wine. That's in Amos. So we see a lot of imagery in the Bible that tells us what, that describes heaven. But what exactly will heaven be like? William Bokenstein's number five reason of what heaven will be like is heaven is a real and physical place. Okay. Just like the earth, the new earth, when God created it, was a real physical place, it's ill-suited for us to think that the new, he- that the new heavens are not going to be a real physical place. Okay? We're going to have work to do. There's going to be animals. There's people are going to get along with one another. Any vision of it being a not real place is not true. So heaven, the number five, is heaven is a real and physical place. William Birkenstein's number four description of what heaven will be like is... Heaven is the reversal of the pain of the curse. Okay? Revelation 21, 4. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. God will restore everything that is lost. Third description of what heaven will be like. Heaven is the realization of fellowship with God. Let's look at 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when He is revealed, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Okay? Heaven is the place where God fulfills His promises and the essence of our perfect relationship with God. We're going to be an awesome, perfect relationship with God in heaven. Number two, what heaven will be like is... Heaven is the realm of worship. If you read Revelation, all through Revelation, you see that the angels and the seraphim surround God, saying he's holy, 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 holy. And that's one of the things that heaven's going to be about. We're going to worship God, and it's going to be amazing. We're not going to be thinking about we don't like the worship leader's take on a song, or we, you know, we'd wish that we'd do it a different way. We are going to be in the presence of God, and we're going to be worshiping him like never before with the saints from all the ages. That's pretty cool. William Bokenstein's number one description of heaven is heaven is a place of restored relationships. We have so many broken relationships here on earth. Sometimes even when we do have good, close family relationships, they're not perfect. In heaven, it's not going to be like that. We're not going to be worried about anything when we're trying to relate to people. There's not going to be jealousies. There's not going to be insecurities. We are going to relate perfectly to those of us who are all in heaven together. It's going to be beautiful. Heaven is a place of restored relationships. So I hope you have a different perspective on hell after today's lesson and a a better one about heaven. I hope that when you um, think about heaven, I know that I am, I'm thinking of glorious brightness and, and the radiance of God and His glory and Jesus and of the saints and everyone from all ages, from all time, worshiping Him, for us working together, for being in wonderful, perfect harmony and union with one another. And um, I hope that it gives you comfort and joy and makes you anticipate heaven. So thanks for being with us.